Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to start building the uh, Trumpeter 135th scale Gorilla 30. Uh, this kit came out uh, about a month or two ago, so it's, it's a relatively new kit. Uh, it's a really large kit too. And this is kind of a paper panzer. And the reason I say that is because the original one is based off of the, uh, the Gorilla 17 that was out, the 170 millimeter uh, gun version. And they actually did produce a prototype of that, so it is theoretically possible that they were going to make these too. According to what, uh, what I was reading on this is the Krupp company received an order to make a line of, of often triggers or weapons carriers and they came up with the, uh, the Gorilla idea and Gorilla just means uh, uh, cricket in German. So the first one was going to be the, uh, the 170 millimeter gun version followed by the Gorilla 21 which was a 210 millimeter mortar carrier. Next up would be the Gorilla 30, which mounted the 305 millimeter Skoda L16 mortar, which was a modified World War I mortar. And then finally, they were talking about doing a 420 millimeter mortar mounted in this, which would have been even more re ridiculously large than what's mounted on this one right here. Now, uh, this is um, a fairly easy kit to put together, it looks like. There's not too many parts, about 300 parts. Uh, most of it will be road wheels, and uh, the tracks are rubber bands. So. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get started on it. Okay, to start off we have a uh, traditional bathtub style hull that I've just kind of dry fitted a few of these pieces into place as you can see I've started to assemble this lower undercarriage piece I'm not quite sure what this is for I understand what these pegs are going to be part that holds the uh, the gun mount into place as you can see underneath here and then once you slide this in you take this rod and you slide it across here and like I said I don't know if this is possibly maybe to lift or to level the gun or something like that. It's just interesting that they put it inside. Maybe a little bit as we get further into the build it'll show up. I've also started taking and gluing together the sets of wheels. Now it's a stretch Tiger II type chassis, you know, similar to it. So it's got quite a few road wheels. In fact, um, gluing and sanding them right now and there's actually 40 road wheels. Luckily, there's just two sets, two different types of um, the sets. So you have one with the uh, the longer piece, and then one that does not. So those will all fit together well. And I'll also, just kind of show you, this is a one-piece upper hull as well. You've got the uh, the mid engine on this vehicle, and they also do include the photo etch grill for all of this, and a slide molded barrel with uh, with some rifling inside there as well. So. What we'll start doing now is I will start uh, gluing on some of the pieces like the uh, fronts here for the drive sprockets and then we'll start going on along the line and putting in all the uh, suspension arms as well. Just thought I would kind of show you how the, uh, the lower hull goes together here with the suspension arms. There are two different types of suspension arm, uh, quite different in the way they look. Uh, according to the instructions though, they want you to, now none of these pieces have been sanded, I've just, tend, just cut them off the sprue just to dry fit them. And the instructions re tell you to go ahead and put this spring in place first and then put these other two suspension arms. I was dry fitting it just a minute ago and found it much easier to go ahead and put the suspension arm first because there is a little bit of play in it and you want them to be, to be level for the road wheel. So get those into place and then, sorry if my hand gets a little bit in the way here. The sponson's kind of uh, blocking my, there it goes. So with that, and this way, it'll get them to line up a lot easier than trying to, to force the spring around. And then once you get that side on, these have a, uh, actually wrong one, this one right here, they have a notch in the circle. So there's only one way to put those on. So you'll get those at the right level no matter what. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and sand these all up, get all these suspension arms on, as well as we'll glue this into place as well. And we'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, we've got all the uh, the wheels and the suspension glued into place. Uh, be extra careful right around and through this area. Uh, these have a lot of meat on them right here, so they hold really well inside here. But the connection point on this couple ones are very, very small, so let the glue dry really well before you do any other type of uh, 
playing around with the hull. Now I also went ahead and glued in just now these uh, these shock towers, I guess they are. And I was right, this is the, uh, the leveling platform for the mortar. So this is adjustable and it's a little tight, but uh, you can get it to work and completely fold up inside or lift the entire back of the vehicle off the ground. So you, when the mortar fires, it's not putting all this pressure on, uh, on these, these back road wheels and suspension arms. So kind of a little ingenious thing that they put inside this kit, but we'll probably just keep it closed up for now like that. But you do have the option if you're gonna do a diorama with it to pop that down. Next, we're going to mount the uh, the gun assembly. Uh, one other quick little note is I did have to hollow these holes out a little bit just to get them to fit over this piece. You don't want to make it too much because you want the gun to be able to you know stay in a position once you get it there, but it wouldn't fit in the way it was. So once that's all uh, sanded out, just yeah, you'll glue those right into place and you'll have your gun assembly set up. Now I've started assembly on the upper hull and I've attached this front uh, plate here and no matter how I messed around with it, I could not get it so I did not have a little gap in this little area. So I found it to be best to, to make this perf these slab sides perfect and then we'll come back and fill this in. Now there is supposed to be a crease up here and this is supposed to be a weld line, but both sides have that little, that little tiny pinhole in it. So I just figured it'd be much easier to fill that than trying to fill anything else along the way. I've also gone ahead and started to attach some of the little lifting hooks, things like that. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put all the, the little little pieces on here. It's all very straightforward, uh, easy assembly on it. So nothing that I need to show you all the different pieces. We'll come back and actually before we do that, I'll just show you how this will just pop right into place right here as well. So you can just see how massive of a vehicle it's going to be. But like I said, I'm gonna come back and uh, show you all the pieces put into place and then we'll go ahead and start uh, doing the last little bits of assembly. Now I'm just taking a sharp scalpel and we're just cutting out the photo etch parts that are going to go on. Now Trumpeter leaves a, a sticky tape on both sides. I remove it off of one side and this keeps the, uh, the item nice and flat. So what I'll do is I'll cut all of these pieces off then we can pull the tape off and it'll keep them flat from wrinkling. And then once we do that we'll just glue them into place onto the vehicle. And then once we get the uh, the piece off, using our file, we can just grind off the little sharp edge that we left behind. And then we're just going to use a little CA glue, put it into place here, and then drop our uh, all of our screens into place. Well, as you can see, we've got most of the uh, the parts on the, the decks as well as the top here. I have the barrel, and we that came as a one-piece mold, uh, slide molded, plus it has some uh, rifle detailing in here. These, once again, are uh, little stains in the plastic from the, from the sprue, but we've sanded them quite a bit now, and they are smooth. We'll put some primer on it to make sure that they are no dots on it, but I think that is pretty smooth. So that'll just slide into place there now, and you can also cap it up if you wanted to on it. Uh, overall, the uh, the fit is is pretty good. The only problem I ever have every once in a while are some of the times that the little, there'll be like a piece that has a pin on it and the corresponding hole that's on the kit is usually just a little bit too small. And that's only happened a couple of times and it's minor because you can, you know it's gonna happen, go through it and just kind of bore them out a little bit more. I've also started patching and clear uh, sealing up all of the little holes on the side the way I'm going to paint this vehicle it's gonna be like if the ward lasted a little bit longer and they were able to get one of these out type things so we're gonna do it in a red oxide primer but then we're gonna camouflage it with just a little bit of the dark yellow rather than doing a regular German three-tone camouflage it was like something that just came out of the factory at the last minute so I don't want any of the brackets on the side and trumpeter did put holes on all the side for lining up all the pieces, which if you're gonna put them on is great, but if you're not, um, you have to do a little repair. And I've put one coat of the putty on it now and put one more little light one on. We'll have those all sealed up. But like I was telling you earlier, we also got all the pieces on the bracket, all the empty brackets. Uh, went together really fine. Now, the only thing I have to debate on now is should I put the wheels on or paint them separately? Uh, 
the next scene you'll see will be me at the paint uh, table starting to paint it. So I've made a decision if I can get in there and paint them all properly, even if they're on the vehicle. So uh, let's start with the painting. Okay, you can see that I've gone ahead and put the wheels in place. And that was mainly because I forgot there was all of these little hubs that were gonna have to be painted separately too. Uh, so you've got quite a few wheels and hubs and all that. I just thought it's gonna be way too much of a pain to paint individually. I can still get in there with the airbrush and paint pretty well around it and it'll just be a lot quicker. So what we'll do for the base coat is we're gonna use our NATO Black XF69. But rather than do the entire coat like we normally do and then do the white, this plastic is so light to begin with, we're just gonna do the outer edges and kind of just any areas that would have shadow effect to it. Uh, and then after that is all done, we're going to use Mission Models paint. Uh, their German red oxide primer and I like this is because the way we're going to do this is like I was telling you earlier red oxide primer as if it just came off the factory floor and then just some quick uh, desert or excuse me dark yellow camouflage over it just something to kind of break it up and then we can beat it up a little bit as well in there so let's go ahead and put the uh, the NATO black on now okay the plans changed a little bit there I know I told I wasn't going to do the total black and white coat but after I put the uh, the black coat on, I found a few little little blemishes that I wanted to take care of, and also didn't like the way the the holes had come out without without putting the brackets on. So went ahead and put all the brackets on, and because I had done so much other uh, fix up on it, went and pit, sprayed the entire thing black, and then then did the highlight coat on it. So we have the uh, the brackets in the shape, and I think we've got the two holes pretty much cleared up right there that would have held the uh, the tow cables themselves so so now that i think we've got it pretty cleaned up we're going to go ahead and shoot the uh, the mission models uh, red oxide primer over the entire vehicle and at this point we can actually do er just about everything on this vehicle Okay, the, uh, the tracks that come in the kit are rubber bands and they're a little stiff because of their thickness and I actually thought about changing them out because they appear to be just King Tiger tracks. And I have one set of Frule model tracks left for King Tiger, but because of the stretch chassis, I won't have enough to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and just use these as they are. And I think once we glue them down, because they are a gluable plastic, we shouldn't have any problem with them. Uh, we're gonna use our chipping brown color to just give them a light little mist over the entire track, kind of dull them down, not so shiny, and also make it so it's not so black. And then after we put that on there, we're gonna coat them with uh, dull coat to seal that in, and then we can do any weathering on top of that. Okay, I've got the, uh, the red oxide primer pretty much on there. Uh, really like the way it looks. Uh, but what I started to do on this side, and I will do on the other side as well, I took a little bit of the NATO green to kind of match the late war German green. And I've sprayed the drive sprocket as well as one of the road wheels. And that's just to kind of break up the, uh, the solid red. Now we are going to put some dark yellow camouflage on it, but I wanted it to look like it's late war. Uh, they may have had some wheels already that were pre-painted that they just went through on the vehicle. Just kind of like haphazardly. Uh, we'll paint the inside of here too. I just noticed I didn't get all of the inside of there. I'm also going to put a few little, uh, probably one or two green wheels on this side as well, just to break it up. And maybe even a dark yellow one. one maybe one dark yellow one, one green one, and then do the green camouflage. Now, I have not uh, attached the barrels you can clearly see because we're going to paint that another solid color too as if the mortar came out of something or was just a separate piece probably just going to paint it that uh that late war it's kind of like a uh a dark gray color that the, a lot of the the guns came out of the factory that way it was kind of like a protective coating over it uh, i sprayed it this but i'm like that's like it's, it's too much red on this so we'll go ahead and paint it the uh the gray color Okay, now I've mixed up a little bit of our, to me, a dark yellow, but I've mixed it with about 40% uh, buff to lighten it down. Late war uh, German color was a little bit lighter from what we've seen in some of the, uh, the artwork, and this is fictional, so it would have been very late war. So now we're just going to do a small amount of camel pattern over the entire vehicle.
Okay, now we've let the uh, the paint job dry, and I've sprayed the entire model with uh, Dolco. Now we're just using a piece of torn sponge in our chipping color, and we're just going to go over lightly and put some little chips and scratches on the uh, starting off with the, on the light dark yellow. You know that doesn't make sense, but it's dark yellow that's been lightened down a little bit. And we'll just go over and start putting some chip marks. Let's see if I can kind of do it this way for you guys. So what I'll do is I'll start going over the rest of the vehicle and putting our chips on it. And I'm also going to take a darker color, just taking the same chipping color, add a little bit more black to it so we can do a little bit of chipping on the, uh, the red oxide. Because this color is so close to it, it won't really show up very well. Also, while we have the uh, same chipping color out, we're taking our brush and just making some scratches that are random different different angles as if it's gone by a building and scraped up against that or or it's some pieces have been put, dragged down the sides just all different types of uh, little scratches on it Okay, like I was talking about earlier, now we're taking our sponge and just using just regular NATO black and we're going to go over mainly the uh, red oxide areas, but we're also going to hit a little bit of the, uh, the dark yellow areas and that's just to kind of blend together, get a couple of different tones of chipping on there. And you want to go real, real light on this on this level because you don't want the black to overrun the brown too, too much. You just want to have it a little, little bit of highlights here and there. Okay, uh, the rubber band tracks on this kit are not the greatest in the world. They're a little stiff and a little hard to work with in some areas, but we're going to try our hardest to make them look as best as possible and this side is done right here uh, I've kind of weathered all those that whole side up and we'll come around and I'm going to show you the exact same process that I did on this side and it's actually pretty pretty quick and straightforward now remember we're going for a vehicle that's been fighting mainly in cities so we're not going to have a ton of mud and muck and grime and stuff like that just going to be some you know debris from like buildings and stuff and that's why I think it's perfect that we use our light sienna uh, as a, from Vallejo and it's very simple we're just going to put a little coat of enamel thinner down and I like the enamel thinner it helps maintain the uh, pigments on pretty well but still not too hard that we can still knock off any excess that we don't want on there so and I'm just going to show you just this little small area how it goes together and then we use a little bit of the uh, light sienna I'm going to work that in, try to get as much as possible into every little nook and cranny because we want the tops to be cleaner. Also we're going to just go down obviously the entire line here, doing the exact same thing. And the tracks are so large on this kit it's, and there's no side skirts or even front fenders on it so it's really important that we uh, get every bit of it. Sometimes I'm not too worried about what's happening inside here because it's not really visible, but this kit is. So this part, like I said, just go back and forth and just put a, a coat over everything track-wise, even down in here. And if you get any on the road wheels, it's absolutely all right because it's uh, anything excess, we can take right off. So I'm going to finish that up and let that dry and come back and show you what it looks like and on to the next step. Okay, now that that is mostly dried, I've got a uh, another wash that's just called track wash. And just putting a little bit on a brush, thin down, we're just going to kind of go inside and hit some of these areas in here that we don't want to be too monotone.
and it'll dry and but you'll still be able to see dirty areas so not completely over everything and while that's drying we can actually go on to the next step I'm gonna be using my polishing powder again which I've told you in the past is not available anymore but you can use the Vallejo uh, dark metal color and that'll work pretty much the same way I'm just putting a touch of it on my finger and we're just gonna go right across the tops of all the tracks in any of the pad areas that you would think would get a lot of contact with the ground and then just start blending it in and you can always take a if, if it's too strong you can kind of knock it down with your big soft brush and blend it into the way you like and then you'll eventually get a uh, a surface that looks like that So I'm going to go ahead and go down the line and finish up the rest of the tracks and get the other side looking like that. I've also gone and hit the, uh, the teeth of the drive sprocket as well as the edge. It's kind of hard to see with the light in here, uh, but also the edge of all the road wheels. Now I only went lightly with that and knocked quite a bit of it off only because they would have some natural metal effect, but I still think there would be some, some amount of dust and stuff on it that would uh, not make it so bright and shiny. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put our washes on and to start I'm just using uh, odorless enamel thinner and just putting a little coat on here just to get the uh, the area wet. find it makes the, uh, the washes flow much easier. We're going to be using a little bit of streaking grime for Africa which is this gray color and we're just going to put a few little little tiny dots of that around mainly onto the uh, the red oxide areas. We're also going to be using regular streaking rust effect which is a little bit darker rust. We can kind of put a few little lines of that around. And I'm going to go more thorough over this. I'm kind of just giving you guys the once over the basics. And finally, we're also going to use a little bit of a light rust color as well. Kind of mix up some of the areas. And you can just put it randomly over different areas. Kind of blot it on down there where there's a lot of scratches. Then it's just a matter of taking your uh, soft brush, it's got a little bit of thinner on it, and just begin to go lightly, streaking down. And see, I like the way the gray looks on the red oxide because it kind of makes it look like watermarks that are uh, some different kinds of dust and stuff that are just settling down on it. And this is the fun part. This is just the blending part now. Now you're just going to keep going over it and over it until you get it to the way you want it. And if you take too much off, put a couple more dots of it on, go down the line and uh, just keep doing it. Keep working it in.
Okay, now what I've done is I've just taken a little bit of that polishing powder too and just hit some of the edges, just so softly, kind of blended it in together, just to make some highlights on all of that. And once that was all done, now I've got my XF57 that uh, I'm going to just lightly mist over from about 18 inches away over the entire vehicle. That's going to blend everything together and give it a nice dusty look to it as if it's been, you know, fighting in streets and it's got a lot of dust built up on it. So here we are, here is our uh, completed model. I'll kind of give you a quick little 360. Slide that back. Of the entire thing. Uh, first of all, to talk about the kit, the kit is very easy and straightforward to put together, uh, nothing very difficult. The tracks are a little bit of a pain uh, just because of the how hard they are and stuff, but you can get them to lay down pretty easily. If you have the ability to get a hold of the aftermarket Fuel model tracks, I would recommend doing that on it. Uh, timing wise, I didn't have time to get them and, and still get the video out. So, And like I said, once you nail them down pretty good with super glue, they're not too bad looking. The uh, camouflage and weathering, I actually had a, a really good time weathering this one up. Uh, something completely different or, or mostly different from what I've been doing. Uh, having just the red oxide primer with the late war uh, dark yellow on it. And then making it not muddy and, but just more of a dusty effect and scratched up as if it's been fighting between buildings like it shows in the background of uh, the, the box art there.